We have a new detail to tell you about in a murder case involving a Harris County Sheriff's deputy. 63-year-old Bernard Spivey's bond was set this morning, and he bonded out within the past three hours. Spivey arrested Monday and charged with killing his 52-year-old wife, Patricia Spivey, at the family's home in the Sunnyside neighborhood. This is the story of Patricia Marshall, a woman whose life journey took an unexpected and tragic turn in the quiet suburbs of Houston. Patricia, known for her warm smile and nurturing spirit, was married to Deputy Renard Spivey, a former bailiff on a popular courtroom TV show. Unfortunately, Renard was a figure whose public service masked a darker reality. As events unfolded, the threads of their lives became woven into a narrative that no one could have predicted and by the end of this seemingly perfect love story, Patricia would be dead. Join us on a journey into the complexity of their relationship, the unraveling of mysteries, and the pursuit of justice. Welcome to our channel. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Houston, Texas, a city known for its vibrant community and diverse neighborhoods. In this vibrant metropolis, the tragic events we are about to unfold transpired, casting a shadow over the lives of its inhabitants. Our focus turns to the victim of this heart-wrenching tale, Patricia Marshall. Patricia was not just a name, she was a nurturing mother to her daughter Patrina Marshall. She was a devoted friend and an essential thread in the fabric of her community. A job that demanded her heart and dedication was her role as a caregiver, radiating warmth and empathy to everyone she encountered. With a heart full of love, Patricia's journey was enriched by her daughter, Patrina Marshall, who found unwavering support and guidance in her mother's presence. Patricia's personality was a mosaic of compassion and strength, a woman who stood strong in the face of adversity and extended a helping hand to those in need. Her laughter echoed through gatherings, and her ability to make people feel heard and valued left an indelible mark. Beyond her professional and familial roles, Patricia was a friend, a confidant, and a source of unwavering love to many. Patricia Marshall's connection to Deputy Renard Spivey is like a story with many layers. Renard has had a long career in law enforcement, starting as a detention officer in 1996 and becoming a deputy in 1998. He has primarily worked in the detention command, with his most recent role in court operations. Additionally, he worked as an actor on a TV show. They were together for a while, sharing their lives. After years of dating Patricia and Renard got married in 2015, while their pictures on social media showed them happy, capturing smiles and offering a fleeting glimpse into their affection, things were not always smooth behind closed doors. They didn't share exactly when they started dating, but they spent many years together. On social media, you could see them smiling and having fun. Together, they walked on a journey that saw them side by side forging a life together in the heart of the community. However, there were troubles too. Patricia's brother mentioned that they argued about Renard's loyalty and some other issues, leading to tension in their relationship. If you don't like the relationship in, that you're in, you can walk away from it. You know, you don't have to end it by ending somebody's life. The tragic incident that forever altered Patricia Marshall's life took place on July 28, 2019, in Southeast Houston. The details surrounding the crime are deeply distressing, offering a glimpse into the darkness that can sometimes shroud relationships. On that fateful day, Deputy Renard Spivey, a veteran of the Harris County Sheriff's Office and a former TV actor, called the police around 3 a.m. He reported an accidental shooting that occurred at their residence on Briscoe Street. One is unconscious, not breathing normally. Close to the accident, he shot seen on the chest and arm. The, the situation was marked by a domestic disturbance, revealing the tensions that had been simmering beneath the surface. Houston police discovered Patricia's lifeless body in the closet of the master bedroom. Close to her, authorities uncovered her cell phone, three shell casings, and a 9mm handgun, neatly positioned atop a clothes hamper. As investigators delved into the incident, it became clear that something much graver was at play. Deputy Spivey had been wounded in the leg during the altercation, while Patricia Spivey was tragically pronounced dead at the scene. The court case that followed shed further light on the events of that night. The Harris County Sheriff's Office, while having no prior record of domestic violence involving Deputy Spivey, began to unravel the complexities of their relationship. The court proceedings revealed conflicting accounts, with Deputy Spivey claiming that the shooting was accidental, a result of a struggle over the weapon during an argument. 
However, detectives were skeptical of this explanation, deeming it inconsistent with the evidence they had gathered. The medical examiner's report indicated that Patricia had been shot twice, and minor bruising around her wrist raised questions about the nature of the argument. According to Houston police, Patricia's elderly father was present in the house when the shooting occurred. However, the elderly man has informed investigators that he neither witnessed nor heard anything related to the incident. During court appearances, Deputy Spivey's attorney maintained that the shooting was accidental, with the defense claiming that the gun might have discharged unintentionally during the heated argument. As the case progressed, it was revealed that Deputy Spivey had called 911 and attempted to revive Patricia after the shooting. However, the evidence presented a more complex picture, and investigators strived to piece together the truth. The legal proceedings delved into the nuances of the case, including Patricia's suspicions about her husband's fidelity and the lack of intimacy in their relationship. Patricia's brother told the police that Patricia and Renard had arguments because they weren't close anymore. Patricia was worried that Renard might be using steroids again or having a relationship with someone else. Her brother talked to Renard a few times before the shooting, and Renard admitted things like she's counting my pills and claiming that I'm sleeping with someone else. Patricia's brother felt sad, saying, I never thought he would do something like this. I should have done something about it, and I'll always regret not acting on it. Renard worked as a deputy for the Harris County Sheriff's Office for a long time. He also acted on TV as a bailiff in a show. Police noticed that Renard even had some problems with paying money to his ex-wife and daughter because he said his income wasn't enough. The police also checked if Renard has any mental health problems. Over look at him years. though, he look mad. <laughs> you don't look happy, brother. You don't look happy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He's very happy. The incident has raised concerns about domestic violence, and the sheriff's office has offered condolences to Patricia's family while emphasizing the importance of seeking help in such situations. A mental health assessment has been ordered for Renard, as there are indications of possible mental health issues. His employment with the sheriff's office is also currently being reviewed. Deputy Renard Spivey, who is facing charges for allegedly killing his wife Patricia, was prohibited from attending her funeral. This decision was made by a judge who ruled that Spivey or his family cannot have any contact with Patricia's family, particularly emphasizing that he should not speak to her brother, Ezra Washington. The judge's decision to prevent Spivey from attending the funeral was based on the no-contact order, ensuring separation between the two families during this trying time. The judge also said Spivey cannot have contact with Patricia's family, that means he can attend her funeral. While Spivey expressed a desire to participate in the funeral, his attorney, Mike DeGuren, noted that Spivey would abide by the judge's order. DeGuren also highlighted that Spivey's profession as an actor required occasional travel to California, and the judge acknowledged potential travel exceptions to his bond conditions when necessary. Despite the legal proceedings, Patricia's family and loved ones remained largely silent, with her daughter present in the courtroom. The prosecutor involved in the case chose not to provide any comments at this time. This is a very tragic event. Hey, anything that we can do, because we are hurt as well. This was a loving family before this tragic event, and uh, we are just as hurt. The court case, filled with complex information and emotional distress, brought about a feeling of doubt about what the final result would be. Media sources closely followed the trial, providing snapshots of Deputy Spivey during the legal proceedings, but the ultimate decision remained uncertain. Patricia's life was filled with aspirations, love, and connections. Her dedication to her daughter, her work, and her community left a lasting impression on those around her. Her untimely death was a harrowing event that should never have happened, shedding light on the need for awareness, intervention, and support systems. Let us honor Patricia's memory by using her story as a catalyst for positive change. I offer my condolences to Patricia's friends and family. May you find healing and peace in time. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.